In the previous lecture, I shared with you how genes define beauty. However, our experiences and psychological research indicate that physical attraction quickly fades. When it comes to mate selection, we value many other qualities and traits beyond appearance. Today, I will discuss from a female perspective what kind of man can become the white knight that makes them fall. Overall, women value a man's wealth and talent. Wealth and status are also a kind of sex appeal. Let me first share with you a story of animal mate selection. There is a small bird that looks like a sparrow, called the shrike. When the breeding season arrives, the male bird begins to hoard items such as snails, mice, feathers, and fabrics, ranging from 90 to 120 pieces. Then it hangs these items on the branches of its own territory, waiting for the female bird to arrive. The female bird usually looks for the male with the most items hanging in his territory, and then mates with him. If psychologists take away the items of this male bird and place them in another male bird's territory, the female bird will turn to the male bird with more items. The male bird, who was once rich and powerful, but bankrupted by psychologists, will end up alone. Doesn't this remind you of when a woman looks at a man's car, house, and savings during a blind date? A study conducted in the United States also reached the same conclusion. The study investigated the minimum acceptable percentile of women for men's earning ability. In other words, what percentage of men's earning ability must exceed for women to consider it acceptable and pass the first test of the white knight? The results showed that American women believed that a white knight's earning ability should exceed that of 70% of other men. Another study of more than 1,000 marriage advertisements found that women's demands for economic resources were 11 times higher than men's demands for marriage partners. This phenomenon is not unique to China and the United States. Similar results have been found in different countries such as Japan, Zambia, Yugoslavia, and Australia, among different races such as whites, Asians, and blacks and in different cultures such as Western, Eastern, and Arab cultures. It is cross-national, cross-racial, and cross-cultural consistency. Another criterion related to wealth is status. Social status is the best clue to judge wealth and resource control. In ancient times, people were very clear about determining men's status levels based on the amount of resources. The word big shot can be found in ancient Egyptian, Sanskrit, and Dravidian. Psychologists found in a survey on marriage that women believed that men's success in the workplace, that is, their social status, was very important for marriage. Zero means completely unimportant, while three means very important and indispensable. Women scored 2.7. But if the evaluation is for a sexual partner, not a husband in marriage, then the importance can drop to 0.23, which means that the success of a sexual partner in his career is completely unimportant. These preferences for wealth and status actually reflect men's ability to raise offspring. However, men who have more wealth and higher status are usually older. What about young men? Won't there be no women who like them? Ambition, diligence, and reliability are more important talents. In fact, they don't have to despair because young men can also have talents that are more important than wealth and status. What are these talents? You can imagine life in ancient times. Men who can make fire for warmth, hunt for food, and gather food can provide women with enough survival resources. If a woman chooses a lazy man who is unwilling to learn various survival skills, she will find it difficult to survive. Therefore, women prefer men who are ambitious and diligent. Psychological surveys conducted in China, Bulgaria, and Brazil all indicate that women believe that men who lack ambition are the least attractive. However, conversely, men do not have strict requirements for whether women have ambition. Not only humans, but animals also have a preference for ambition and diligence, such as the weaver bird on the African savanna. 
During the breeding season, male weaver birds carry long yellow grasses that are several times or even dozens of times longer than their bodies, flying several kilometers or even dozens of kilometers to weave their nests. Once the nest is woven, the male bird waits at the entrance for the female bird to arrive. When the female bird approaches the nest, the male bird hangs upside down on one side of the nest, vigorously flapping to show the strength of the nest. At this point, the female bird flies into the nest, pushing and poking around to check if the building materials are secure. If the female bird finds that the nest does not meet the requirements, she will leave and continue to search for other male birds' nests. Interestingly, if the nest is rejected by different female birds several times in a row, the male bird will push down the nest and rebuild a better and more sturdy one. It should be noted that ambition and diligence must be used in the right context. Psychologists placed several photos of men and babies together and asked women to evaluate the attractiveness of the men in the photos. A photo of a man interacting with a baby. A photo of a man ignoring a crying baby. A photo of a man cleaning and doing housework seriously. A photo of a man standing quietly. As expected, women think that men who interact with babies are more attractive than men who ignore crying babies. This is because women prefer men who are willing to share the responsibility of raising offspring with them. However, what really alerts men in this experiment is that women think that men who are cleaning and doing housework seriously are not attractive. The attractiveness of the man in this photo is even as low as that of the man who ignores the crying baby, and much lower than the attractiveness of the man who stands quietly. We often say that a man who takes care of his family is a good man. But from the perspective of genetic continuity, what women need is not a man who does housework, but a man who can bring resources to the family and protect the family from wind and rain. In addition, women also prefer men who are highly reliable. Reliability is what we usually call trustworthy. If a man is unpredictable and constantly changing, then during the hunting and gathering period in ancient times, he might decide to take a nap or not do anything at the most critical moment, and all previous efforts would be in vain, missing the results that were about to be achieved. Reliability also refers to stable emotions and mature behavior. Imagine a man who lacks a sense of security and trust, or a childish and self-centered man who may make unreasonable demands on his wife and is more likely to use violent language or even violence. Therefore, having nothing is not terrible, but being content with the status quo, lazy, and unreliable, is. Such a man will definitely not be the prince charming in women's hearts. Parental investment theory, women are more picky in mate selection. You may ask, why are women more picky in mate selection than men? You see, women require men to make money, while men do not care whether women can make money. Women require men to be ambitious and work hard, while men say that women are virtuous without talent. Women require men to be reliable and mount tie collapses in front of them without changing color, while women can be cute by being coquettish or even throwing tantrums. From the perspective of evolutionary psychology, these differences are due to the parental investment theory. The parental investment theory means that the party that pays a higher cost and invests more in reproducing offspring will be more picky. When women reproduce offspring, their costs and risks are obviously higher than those of men. Let's count the cost differences between men and women in producing offspring. A man can produce billions of sperm in his lifetime, and each sperm can develop into an individual, so it is cheap and almost infinite. However, for women, the number of eggs is very limited, only a few dozen, and only one is produced per month, so it is expensive and limited. The opportunity costs paid by men and women in producing offspring are completely different. Once a woman becomes pregnant, it means that she cannot produce another offspring within 9 to 18 months. Men do not have this problem. The risks borne by men and women are also different. 
When a fertilized egg grows into a 7 or 8 pound baby in the mother's body, women not only pay for nutrition but also face the threat of difficult childbirth and postpartum depression. Men do not need to bear the risk of giving birth to a child at all. The initial breastfeeding, nurturing, protection, and feeding of children are all the responsibilities of women. The most basic economic theory tells us that the party with valuable resources cannot be easily given away. Therefore, women who have more valuable resources and invest more in offspring naturally have to be more picky about men. This is the parental investment theory. Therefore, American anthropologist Sarah H. R. D. Y. said, In a sense, female mate preferences may determine the direction of species evolution. Because females are the masters of mate choice, they decide when to mate, with whom to mate, and how often to mate. The parental investment theory not only explains why women are more picky in mate selection, but also explains why murder first occurred in men. In the archaeological discoveries of damaged skeletons, male bones have far more fractures and dents than female bones. This is because the party with less investment, that is, men, will face more fierce competition for female partners and resources.